Hello, this is Mike Fauche, and in today's video, I'm going to review the TLWR1502X, which is an AX1500 Wi Fi 6 travel router from TP Link. This is a full featured travel router which directly competes with others, such as the GLINet, which I've previously reviewed on my channel. If you want to see how this compares, stick around for the rest of this video, and please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help support the channel. Full disclosure, TP-Link did reach out and send me this with no strings attached. They haven't influenced this video, nor have they seen it before it was published. All the results and the opinions are my own. Let's start by reviewing the hardware and what comes in the box. You get the power brick, and thankfully it's a standard USB 15 watt charging brick, the USB A to C charging cable, an Ethernet cable, and the device itself. Looking at the back of the unit, you get a USB-C port for charging, USB-A port, a LAN port, and a WAN port. On the side is the WPS reset switch and the mode switch, which allows you to switch between AP repeater, hotspot, and router. As you'll see in the setup, the switch is important as modes can't be changed through the software and have to be changed through this switch. The front of the device only has LED and vents, so overall has a very simplistic, sleek look. It doesn't look like a typical router. In terms of specs, this router supports dual band Wi-Fi 6 with theoretical speeds up to 1.5 gigabits per second, 1201 megabits per second on 5 gigahertz, and 300 megabits per second on 2.4 gigahertz. It has support for OpenVPN and WireGuard and can be configured as a router, hotspot, access point, and range extender. In addition, it supports USB tethering, and 3G and 4G USB modems. The device can be powered from a power bank or the included supply and supports file sharing using the built-in USB port. Now that we've seen the hardware, let's get into the setup and configuration. There are different ways to set this up, but I'm gonna do the initial setup with my laptop. I'll cover the app later as that requires you to create a TP-Link account. The first step is to power up the unit and connect your laptop or computer to the new Wi-Fi. The SSID and default password are listed in the back of the unit. After you successfully connect to the new Wi-Fi, open your browser and the address bar and type tplinkwifi.net, and this will search out and load the configuration screen. After the device is loaded, you're greeted with the screen to create an administrator password. On the next screen, you'll see an overview of the different modes and the current mode that you're in. If you want to change these modes, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be done by the switch on the side. Click next and select your time zone in the next section where you'll pick the internet connection you want to attach to. Remember that this is setting up as a hotspot, so this is how the travel router will actually connect to the internet. It'll show you a list of available Wi-Fi networks to select from. As this is the initial configuration, You'll see later in the video on how to connect to different networks as you travel to different locations. Pick the one that you want, such as the hotel or Starbucks or any other local Wi-Fi and type in the password. Most of the time you'll leave the dynamic IP address setting and hit next. The following screen gives you the option to change the behavior of the MAC address, which you should probably just leave at the default unless you have a specific need to change it. In some rare cases, this may be required to access some of the networks. In the next section, you have the opportunity to change and personalize the wireless settings, such as the SSID and password. By default, the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz are linked together, so if you change something in the 2.4 gigahertz entries, it'll propagate over to the 5 gigahertz settings. When you hit next, it will do a connection test. You might be periodically prompted to create a TP-Link account until you click don't remind me again. We'll do more on the app later in the video. When the connection test is completed, you are logged into the main configuration screen. This shows you an overview and the internet status of your current connection. On the internet tab is where you'll make all the connections to different networks, such as if you take this to a different location by clicking Wi-Fi scanner and selecting a new network and connecting to it. Clicking on the wireless section, this displays and allows you to change everything about your SSID, including the name, security type, channel width, channel section. I found that the defaults will work really well. It's nice to know that you can change them. On the bottom, you have an option of creating a guest network. On the advanced tab, there are several sections. So let's go over to the LAN tab. 
This is where I suggest making a change right away to avoid potential problems, unless this is your only router and you plan on using this as your main router. The default setting here is 192.168.0.1, which can cause issues if you're using this device as a hotspot and should really be changed right away. I would suggest something like 192.168.30.1 or any number except 0 or 1. I used 4 due to the current VLAN configuration that I have on my network. Set it to the number that you want, but just don't leave it at the default. Next, go to the DHCP tab. As you can see, the DHCP server has adjusted its range of IP addresses to match your LAN gateway that we set on the previous screen. You can also adjust ranges, lease times, and add DNS servers such as Google or Cloudflare if you want to. Looking below, you can also add fixed IP addresses if you want your clients to always use the same IP addresses in the future. This is particularly helpful if you need it later, such as in the parental control section. Going to the USB section, this is where you can scan for any attached USB devices so you can share files or with other users such as music or movies. I use this a lot when I travel to playback content. This also works with a USB cellular mode should you have one. Under NAT forwarding, you have the ability to forward ports to the event that you need to do that. Looking at the UP and P section was a surprise to me as the default is enabled. In my opinion, this should never be enabled especially by default for security reasons. This is a little surprising given TP-Link's roots into networking. This, of course, is pretty easy to change, but you really shouldn't have to. Next is the DMZ section, which is off by default. The last section is parental controls, which I thought was a pretty awesome feature to have for those who travel with kids, especially for a device in this price range. You can set up times of operation, attach specific devices, and create filter rules. Next, you have the QoS and security sections, which allow you to set access control and limit the devices that can attach to your device, which is also a great feature to use for additional security. The last tab I want to cover is the system tab. In the firmware section, you can set up or change auto firmware, as well as manually check for any new versions. Below is the backup and restore, so you can save your settings in the event you have to do a factory reset on the device. Now that we've seen the main features and walked through the basic configuration, let's do a quick speed test just to see how it performs. To set the stage, I wirelessly attached my Wi-Fi 6 laptop to the TLWR1502X that is set up as a hotspot. The hotspot is also wirelessly connected to another Wi-Fi access point to emulate how you would use the hotspot in a real-world situation such as a hotel or coffee shop. Performing a dual hop over wireless is always a challenge. But as you can see from the results, it actually performs pretty good. I tested this with both speed test and open speed test just to see how it performed and overall I was impressed with both. As I mentioned earlier in this video, they offer a full featured mobile app for Android and iOS that lets you easily set up or modify your device on the fly. After you download and launch, you're prompted with the options of joining the user experience, which I opted not to do, and to accept their terms and conditions. Next, you have to grant permissions for to search your network. Make sure that you're actually connected to the router's Wi-Fi or it won't find your device when it actually searches. It'll prompt you to log in if you already have a TP-Link ID or to create one if you don't. Creating one's pretty easy. Just go ahead and type in your email, hit continue, create and confirm your password, and agree to the terms and conditions. You'll be prompted to activate your TP-Link ID, so just check your email and activate the account. Once you log in, you'll see a listing of your devices, so just go ahead and click on the actual device and type in the password to log in and control it. The application is really well laid out, and as you can see, all the same basic features that are on the web browser. For example, to change the internet connection that you're attached to, just tap on the current connection. You'll be prompted to enable remote management and bind the device to this account. Tap confirm and it'll rescan all the local networks. Select the one you want and type the password and you'll be connected. On the bottom of the app, you'll see the three tabs. The family tab is where you can set up or add modify parental controls. And the more tab is where you'll find all the settings and features for the device. Overall, I found the app really responsive and it actually had all the features that you would have from the web browser with the convenience of being able to use the mobile app. So what do I think of this product? Given the price point, I was really impressed with the device. 
I found the basic setup and configuration to be more straightforward than most, and despite having a full feature set, it was easy to navigate and configure. The only minor gripe I had was their choice of default gateway IP addresses, which you can easily change, and the decision to enable UPnP by default, which was questionable. That said, it's also very easy to disable, and hopefully in future releases, they'll change that to leaving it off by default. Aside from these two minor things, the device was really good and I enjoyed using this. It has good performance and an overall great value. The addition of parental controls and auto update are a nice addition to a device in this category. The added support of WireGuard and OpenVPN are also a bonus for those who travel and need that extra security. Given the price point, this device is really hard to beat. I'd like to thank the team at TP-Link for sending me the device and allowing me to do this review. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and please don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.